It is finally time, collection of my new Ford Mustang Dark Horse, the new 7th gen Mustang. There's only one problem with this. We're currently here at the Schmuseum in England. The new car is waiting at Pat Milliken Ford in Detroit, Michigan, in the United States. Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Let's do this, let's get to America. Let's collect the new Shmi-mobile. It was about two and a half years ago that I collected the Shelby GT500, the ultimate badass version of the previous generation Mustang, took delivery in Florida, drove it thousands of miles across the United States, eventually imported it here to the UK. This was the ultimate of the sixth gen. Well, the Dark Horse is the new seventh generation Mustang, and it's very different to that one. This only arrived a few weeks ago, the Ford Mustang Mackie -E GT, and I know it's a bit of a polarizing discussion when we talk about Mustangs and electric SUVs, but the fact that both this and the new car, which in the current era still has a naturally aspirated V8 and a manual gearbox, is really quite crazy. Anyway, we're a couple of weeks in, over a thousand miles down. We're gonna be taking the Mackie -E GT over to London Heathrow to catch the flight today, to get us to Chicago, to pick up a rental car, to then take that to Detroit, to then have a quick sleep before heading over to Pat Milliken Ford, where it's gonna be time to get the car unveiled, collect it and take it away. However, Unlike the Shelby GT500, the Dark Horse is going to be staying in the United States. It will eventually be offered for sale here in the UK as well, but I want it as the American Schmimobile. We're going to be doing a ton of miles. In fact, over the next month or two, a lot of them, all the way coast to coast, across the country, thousands of miles, just as we did with this. Some epic memories, enjoying a car as you should. It's going to be interesting though for reasons we'll talk about a little bit later. Anyway, time is quickly marching on. We've got a flight to catch. Let's hop in the Mackie, pull it on out, get over to the airport and get to America to go pick up the dark horse. It's an early start to the day. This thing in the cyber orange is looking good, but let's get this journey underway. There's gonna be a lot of traffic on the way over to the airport, but we will do what we can do and get on the move. Well, so far it's not looking too bad on the motorway, but I suspect traffic is ahead. Either way, we have just under an hour to go to Heathrow Airport. That's gonna leave us about an hour and a half for the flight, which is a bit of a squeeze for one across the pond, but um, hands-free driving because Mackie, -E, the first autonomous approved vehicle here in the United Kingdom for driving on the motorways. But yeah, sun is out, lovely day to be setting off. Let's do this. Well, that didn't take long. It's always gonna be the case on the M25 in England. Bit of traffic, not ideal. First up, now that we're here at Heathrow and about to go and check in, is I've got to get the payment sorted because of course I'm buying a car in dollars and I'm a pounds guy. So this is where currency solutions step in. You saw Steve on the channel before, in fact, when he popped by the Schmuseum, just on hold at the moment. And as soon as this is done, I will have sent the monies and that's step one, ready to go and pick it up. But timing, kind of lastminute.com, given we're literally here, ready to go and fly. So fingers crossed this all goes to plan. <laughs> that is all great. Thank you very much. Perfect. Have a great day. Right, we're off. It's time to go. It's time to go check in and do this. To get our luggage out of the Mackie, -E. plenty of space. You need a practical car in the garage, right? Always use small suitcases because when you are traveling, you never know what car you might end up in and what you might need to leave behind, which is why we always do the small trolley bags. So, one step closer. Well, here we go. Time to board. Let's go. Here we are, lovely day. Time to go through immigration, all of that, and go pick up our car. Well, that's kind of fun. Hello, welcome in many different languages. We're going uh, this way. Long old walk through the airport. Another mode of transport on a transit. Chicago is, the city is over that way. 
uh, rental cars are this way somewhere. We've made it then. It's a bit cooler here. And this is our beast of a rental car. Now, once we picked up the dark horse, it's going to go for PPF and all of that. So we need a way to get around. I've rented something. This is what we've got. This very red Ram 1500 Classic. No idea what it's going to be like. It's also a very long way from home. It is clearly from Texas and somebody must have driven it up to Chicago. We've got that for now. But while we've been traveling, I've got to say thanks to Steve and the team at Currency Solutions. The payments have been managed. That's gone through, all done, landing this side, ready to collect. Would have been a small little hiccup in the plans if that hadn't landed in time. And today was some kind of holiday day here. So payments have been a little bit backlogged anyway. We're in Chicago, the car is here, the truck is here, I should say. I haven't really driven something like this a long distance before. Done test drives in like Raptors and TRXs, but not a longer drive. Let me get all the luggage in, let's go hit the road, and let's make our way to Detroit. I've moved everything, we are ready, let's fire it up. Yes, all of the lights, no, we're good, we're clear. Sounds like Texas, even though we are a long way from Texas. Into drive. Let's go. From traffic in England to traffic in America, but this could not be more American right now. There's a U-Haul trailer in front. We're driving in a pickup truck and we're on the way to go and collect a muscle car. And we've got massive cup holders, which we need to fill with some supersized drinks from some fast food places. I think the day is set. Traffic is not ideal, but it's definitely feeling the vibe right now. Thank you very much. Yes, this had to be done. We have pulled in to a McDonald's drive-through. We have not gone for supersize everything, but we do have the golden arches. I, I, I just feel like this is becoming very cliche, but it's good fun. And that's what it's supposed to be because it's an exciting day, an exciting journey, all the way to the new Mustang. We enter our second state of the day into Indiana. A tiny bit further on, welcome to pure Michigan, state number three. Fast forward, it's been an uneventful drive. We are now here in Dearborn, Ford territory. We've got a lot of luggage with us, parked up for the night. Time to go check in, have a sleep, because tomorrow is a big and exciting day. Good morning, it is time. It is collection day of the Dark Horse. So let's get this started. It's a little bit colder here than it was yesterday, but a short little hop. We've got about five, 10 minutes over to the dealer where the car is awaiting us. Let's go. You might be wondering, how did I choose where to buy this car from, given it's thousands of miles away from home? Whatever we do. Well, I've actually known the guys at Pat Millican Ford, Kevin and the team, for a good few years. In fact, even talking to them back when I had my Ford GT out here in America four and a half years ago, they are the number one delivering Ford GT dealer in the world. I think they've delivered over a hundred cars, including when I was here six and a half months ago in Detroit for the very final car to be handed over. They were responsible for that one. The showroom is just up here on the right, which means we need to work out where to go, head to the new car side of things, and somewhere in there is a dark horse that we have literally traveled around the world to come and pick up which is quite bonkers to think about. Let me pull in here. Um, lots of cool cars around, so I don't know where exactly we're going. I've obviously not been here before, but uh, let's go and park this somewhere and go inside and say hello and take it from there. Quickly, before we head in, I've got to show you something new in the Cheers by Schmeon 50 shop. We have a new design to go with the arrival of the Dark Horse on the channel, given we're here in the United States, given it is the seventh generation Mustang. And of course, that is the spec. You're gonna see it in full in just a moment. Let's hunt on in, go and say hello, but make sure to check those out at cheers.shmeal50.com. Come on in then. We've got a special side workshop to go and take a look at this. Welcome here to Pat Millican Ford and what awaits us inside this room, something it's actually really very special. Come on through because right in here, we have my new Ford Mustang Dark Horse. And I know we've just put a cover on it. I've signed all of the paperwork, done everything to make sure this is actually mine. It's been quite a complicated one with insurance and everything to get this ready. And the cover I've popped on it might not necessarily be for the right car, but that's a side topic for right now. Under here though, we have 
the Oxford white with all of the satin grey finishings that we're going to go through in detail in a moment. And in fact, I asked if the guys wouldn't mind if I can peel off a lot of the different protective packagings and films and things that are in it, which we're about to do as well. First time I've actually ever done that on one of my own cars. So I think it's time that I go and pull this cover off and reveal it to you. Here we go then, let's do this. Say hello to the new Schmiemobile, the Mustang Dark Horse, the new 7th gen S650 Mustang, Oxford White. I think from here on, this is the Stormtrooper, how this thing looks. The Dark Horse is the more track focused version, a new badge, a new name. Everywhere you look, you've got these very menacing emblems all around the car. But obviously this is in some ways based on the previous gen car, but this particular example has the Dark Horse handling pack. We're gonna go through the options. So we've got some very, very wide rubber and wheels on this thing inside, all important in here. And you can see what I was saying about the packaging. We have a manual a manual gearbox, the blue shift knob on the top, a clutch pedal. We have the park brake. We need to talk about that as well, but there aren't exactly many cars anymore that offer naturally aspirated V8s and manual gearboxes. Name me another one from a mainstream manufacturer. We'll be waiting a long time. That's why this for me is so unbelievably cool. We've got the package that includes the vinyls. So you could have these painted. I've got the vinyls here. We might be changing things down the line. Of course, before driving it, we're gonna be doing PPF and that side of it as well. They've installed the extended splitter at the front here at the dealership, ready to rock and roll. But this is, this is a funky one for me because with all of the videos that I make, when I buy a car, I've nearly always driven it before. I've been on a press launch, I've borrowed one, I've experienced what it's about. I've never driven a seventh gen Mustang full stop, let alone a dark horse. This is gonna be the first time driving my own, which is really quite cool. And in addition to that, also understanding how everything inside works, the new screens, the new systems, we've got the window sticker here as well, but inside, We've now got these two digital screens that both face obviously towards the driver, a lot to learn with all of that and a ton more to go through. So it's probably time to start peeling and unpackaging some of this and getting it ready to reveal in all its glory. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you will know that when I buy a new Schmiemobile, it very quickly accrues a whole lot of miles. And this is about to be an extreme example. In three weeks time, when we get to SEMA in Las Vegas, in just three weeks, I think this dark horse is going to have around 5,000 miles on the clock. And remember, one of those weeks is gonna be spent getting PPF installed. So this has been bought to drive. Now it's going to be my permanent American Schmiemobile. It's not gonna be imported to the UK. It's gonna be staying out here for at least a couple of years. I don't really know what comes next. We'll get to that down the line. But when it comes to having a one car garage, and ironically, at this moment in time, my Zenvo is actually still at the Peterson Museum in Los Angeles. I'll be back with that very soon. It needs to be a car that ticks a lot of different boxes. It needs to be pretty cool and exciting because you have to want to go and drive it. It needs to be great at the racetrack. I love doing track days, as you know, hence the handling package on this. It needs to also be very good for long distance drives, for grand tours. And that means a ton of luggage space, a lot of comfort inside, all of the technology. And in fact, when it comes to this thing back here, if I pop open the boot or the trunk, I should say, back here, we've still got all of the packaging. We've got the floor mats and things, but we've got a ton of space, which is crucial. We're about to be on the road for five or six weeks, something like that. So I wanna make sure that we can actually take everything with us in the car of choice, hence why I've gone for this. Now, I think it's time to start peeling some of this stuff off because I've never really done this before. We've got stickers on the windows. We've got the seat covers. In fact, let me just remove the driver's seat cover. Come and have a look at the seat up close. We've gone for the blue or indigo option. So we've got the stitching and the blue inserts and other details. But probably the most satisfying thing doing all of this is when you start to remove these different films, which are all on it to protect it in transfer over to the dealer. I know some people love to keep all of this stuff. Some of them actually go under the seals. So I need to work out how they come off carefully. Not too bad under the window rubber here, but that just makes sure that when it's being transported and transferred around, it all stays in good shape and is quite fun to peel off and peel away. What do we have down here? The floor carpet. That one's actually a little bit fiddly. I don't know how you, how you grab it. It's attached directly to the carpets. I'll figure a way. I will figure a solution to that. There we go. That goes under the plastic. 
yeah, so this is going to be a fun little bit of time for me to get everything peeled and removed. New car vibes, but I think the best bit, the best bit is this. Check this out. Mustang, dark horse. There we go. That is super sticky. The Mustang Dark Horse Sills. Get this last bit, knowing my luck, it's gonna leave a tiny bit. There we go. Cool, right. Give me a little bit of time and I will start getting more of these off the car <laughs> and figuring out what to do. With most of those off, we also have here the window sticker, which shows the total MSRP of $71,705. And I know what people are gonna say, you spent over 70 grand on a Mustang. It's quite a special Mustang. The GT500 was a touch over $100,000, obviously a little bit even more extreme than this with carbon wheels, carbon wing, etc. But this is a fairly high spec car, shows you all of the options here. Optional equipment, black calipers, sound system with the tech pack, we've got the hood stripes, we've got the seats, the Recaro seats, we've obviously got the gas guzzle attacks, the floor mats, we've got the dark horse handling package. It all comes together, throw in the sales tax, for where it's going to be registered and everything else and i think all in it was a touch under seventy-seven thousand us dollars and then in addition to that insurance which is about two and a half thousand dollars for six months so that adds up very fast as well anyway i'm going to keep that to the side for a moment because i am yet to sit in here i have not sat in this car we need to take off a few more stickers but i have both keys for it right here genuinely first time taking any seat inside it for me I will need to get everything comfortable, but what I really would like to do is pull this forwards, put on the clutch, press the button, and take a listen. Oh, oh, oh. oh yes. That actually sounds amazing. That sounds really amazing. There are a whole ton of different driving modes and things that we'll need to go through in here. The seat movements, the seat back. Oh, that's going to be so good. This is cool. I've just got a lot to learn. I've got a lot to learn with this because I've not had this before. It's a very trick system. All right. That sounds good to me. Wait, do we have a button again? We must have buttons to change the exhaust valves. Cold start comes to an end. I am sure I'm totally at the beginning. If I press the Mustang button, I'm literally learning as I go here, pressing the buttons, figuring it out, seeing what's what, and just kind of going with the flow. Okay, <laughs> so we've got 16 miles on the clock. It's brand new. It will need a little bit of running in. That is cool. Such a short throw. Much more of that to come. Okay, for now we'll shut it off and get ready to learn more about it later on. Next thing to try is to have a look at the engine bay. I haven't actually opened this yet, so first time, bear with me. Where on earth is the catch? Is it like in the GT? Yes, very easy. Oh, sweet. 500 horsepower now, 20 more than the standard five liter GT, but five liters of naturally aspirated eight cylinder engine. I like how this is presented. Very cool, looks awesome. Big beastie of an engine, development obviously of the Coyote on the previous generation. And there are some really fun tricks and interesting details on this. Come around towards the back. Let me show you something back here. On the glass, on the rear window, have a look at this. Can you see this outline? You've got all the previous generations of Mustang on here, going back to the 60s, all the way through. There are lots of fun heritage nods throughout the car, even if I actually open the boot again back here. Look at the details, even here, the silhouette, the outline. I like how they've done that, and I'm sure there are a ton more to find in the software and everything. But being Dark Horse, we've got the bigger wing, we've got all the craziness. Oh, it's a bit mad, isn't it? It's a bit mad. And I tell you what takes a moment to learn is the park brake, which is electronic as opposed to manual, but you pull it up to turn it on and you press it down to turn it off. 
but obviously the sound of this sounds epic which is going to take a few photos right here at the front of the showroom look at that outside full stormtrooper spec full full stormtrooper spec with this thing all the black accents i actually really like the different shades of black satin gray gloss black the multiple different shades you have on the livery suits it really really well cool cool what a thing it's mustang in america day it's actually mine now <laughs> in typical fashion given that there is a brit in town it has started to rain so we're going to take this and go and get it loaded up that sounds amazing there's a little pop on the startup as well um we're sending it by transporter now we could drive it to where it's getting ppf but my opinion with ppf is to do it from the very beginning because in typical fashion if you drive it the first couple of hundred miles you'll get a massive stone chip and that's defeating the point and purpose of actually doing it so we will go and load this and i'll show you and explain a little bit more what we are up to there but we need to turn it around this is good nice high quality camera that we've got on this those kind of things are often ignored and forgotten. Obviously, wireless Android Auto, all of that stuff. Sounds amazing. I'm so pleased already that I have this with a manual. Obviously, this is just in first gear, but this is such a nice shifter. And unlike my Lotus Amira, the numbers over the top are not rough. They don't kind of hurt the inside of your palm after driving it. Although I'm sure when it's in a cold place, it's going to be freezing. And when it's in a hot place, it's going to absolutely burn my hand because it is metal. I can't believe this has actually worked out. The last few days, getting everything ready, have been pretty intense. I'm not going to count this as the first drive because half a mile around a parking lot doesn't really count. But it is the first time getting a feel for what, what it's like with the rain starting to come down on us and the Trofeo RS tyres, which we'll have to talk a little bit more about as well down the line. But it is with thanks to Trucker who have provided the trailer, which is actually waiting just over there to take this over to Chicago, that we have the transport arranged. And they've been very patient and kind and helpful with that side of things, as we've been dealing with all the paperwork and everything that is involved. But this is gonna be heading in and making its way onwards from here towards Chicago, which will be obviously our next update. For now though, the strange, I need to get used to this. As you pull this up, that's on it's electronic it just feels like it should be a normal handbrake but it's not there's going to be so much running through of this i mean just very briefly features because i've learned a little bit already my mustang in here you can go to um well you can bring up auxiliary gauges on this screen if you want some more information displays you've got custom mode where you can configure your custom driving mode so obviously i'll set this up to be noisy and sporty but with soft suspension because that's how i often like it clusters you can have the instrument cluster changing with your different driving modes and check this out as you go through the different driving modes you get these amazing animations normal sport track i love the one for drag strip <laughs> look at that this is on the gt as well as the dark horse by the way but burning out those tires ready to go and race to warm things up and you've got slippery mode and you can have the different displays so if you go into track you'll see how we now have a horizontal rev counter across the top wait for it wait for it like this as opposed to the standard or you can set it manually and they've thrown in this nod to the late 80s early 90s fox body which gives you this display which a lot of people truly love and that's kind of fun i'm probably going to set it to the match drive mode for the time being but i appreciate that we have those kind of things and i appreciate also that you can make it really loud so exhaust mode settings here if you're in quiet mode like super super quiet and soft the exhaust is valved obviously new car so it's only three or four thousand rpm if you pop it up into track mode track exhaust yes but we need it to be a little bit uh run in before we do too much of that anyway let us hop out go say hello and get this car loaded for transport it sounds so good time to load it up it's a big thanks to trucker they have been very patient with working out how this was going to play out with timings making sure the payment was all done everything like that first time for me hearing it from outside and obviously seeing it from outside as well that is a very very low splitter i need to be super conscious of that with everything that's coming make sure that we don't have any issues at least it's plastic so it's not going to be a huge fortune worst case scenario but um once this is loaded in it's always quite fun with the 
massive multi-car transporters, it can head towards paint protection film. That's the end of the cold start. It does that often. This is literally learning, taking it all in. I, I don't really know all that much about this car yet. With this getting lifted up to go inside the trailer, it's such a stormtrooper when it's out here and it's actually quite fun. If you're familiar with Stang mode, he's called his Darth Vader in Blue Ember. Actually also Austin from Speed Phenom came here and shot a video of a dark horse right here at Pat Milliken. So to have bought my car from Kevin finally having spoken for so long is really quite fun. In it goes. It's a little bit weird as a way to end the collection day in some ways, but hey, onwards. We're going to be back with it very soon, getting it all ready to go and enjoy properly. Because as you guys know, any Schmiemobile is going to be driven as a car should. It will at some point go to VMAX, it will do some track days, and it will do a whole lot of miles. It's at this point then, oddly, that we're saying farewell for the time being to the Dark Horse. The end of today at least, the start of a very, very, very fun adventure with what is now actually my sixth current Ford in the Schmiemobiles, becoming a little bit of obsessive. And as we started this video, depending how you want to look at it, either my second or third current Mustang. What a day it has been though. Again, a huge thanks to the whole team here at Pat Milliken for all of their support and help with the car. Everybody at Ford with the videos we shot of the car in the process in the build-up. Also, Steve at Currency Solutions, thoroughly recommended if you need to transfer any funds into different currencies. And of course, the trucker who are helping out moving it as well. Information is down below if you'd like to find out some more. But there though, that basically wraps things up. Thank you very much to you guys, as always, for your support. It is hugely appreciated. But that is it for this time. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.